Hey guys, I'm Folygon here with your daily dose of ZBrush and work motivation. Today I have a ZBrush tutorial of sorts for you. We're going to be covering the creation of a stylized female face, one step at a time, one video a day for this week. So five videos Monday through Friday. Today is the first video of sculpting the head, and this will be part one. And then from there, we'll go into stuff like the eyes, the nose, the lips, the ears, and so on and so on. So here for you, instead of showing you exactly how I did this, what tools I used, what brushes I used, there's a ton of different videos that you can find online of people doing that. And maybe I'll go into more details with it as we get into stuff like the ears or the eyes and what tools I'm using to do that kind of stuff. But at least for this basic head, I want you to be able to see what I use to study anatomy, how I accomplish that, and what kind of tools that are in ZBrush built in already available for you as far as references that you can use to further your anatomy knowledge. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I study anatomy here. So we're going to take a look here first at the model I was just showing you, or at least what I should have been showing you. So we got here the head and then the neck. And these two pieces are pieces that I created, and we'll get to the, these uh, two pieces down here in just a minute. This head here, basic proportions of a human head. Same with the neck, basic, basic proportions of uh, the neck here then uh, flowing down into the body, the pecs, and a little bit of the traps here. So looking at this head, I want to go ahead and show you how I study anatomy and how I attempt to work on it and improve on it. Well first, I'm always referencing real life images, stuff that I'm looking up online, or uh, any of the anatomy books that I have. So if we're taking a look at this here, I used a bunch of different tools to shape this, but I want to go ahead and let you be able to at least look at this, what we have here, so you can get an idea of what you can do, and you're going to see how you can do that here in a minute. So let's take a look at what I use to study anatomy down here. So I have these two meshes, and these are some of the best references that you can get that come right in ZBrush. Totally free. I'm going to show you where you can get them here. Here's the skeleton. And then here's all the muscles along with some fat pads. So this model comes in default, standard with ZBrush. Awesome stuff. Totally free. Created by Ryan Kingsline. I'm going to show you how you can get this and how you can work with it. So you go up here to your light box. Click on Tool, and then Ryan King's Line model right here. Double click that, it's going to load that up for us. Here it is, we got the skeleton here, and then we have all these muscles as well. Just tons and tons of muscles that you can cycle through. Instead of doing all that though, and looking at each one individually, which you can totally do, because this is a video where we're focusing on the head, that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to go down here into Merge, Merge Visible, and then I'm going to click on this one here. Here's everything merged for us, all the polygroups. And what I would like to do from here, this is how you're going to start. Control shift click the top of the skull there so I can get the entire skeleton. And then I'm just going to split hidden so I have the skeleton and then the muscles and fat all separated onto two different tools. And then from here, what you can do is you could append a sphere or place a sphere in here. We'll just grab a sphere 3D and take a look at this. Let's go ahead and turn off our muscles. So we're just looking at the skeleton here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this transparent. Move it on up here. Make sure our X symmetry is on, and then we're just going to scale it down and line it up with that back portion of the skull. So this is how I do it, guys. This is how I practice and work on anatomy. 
And this is a great way, if it's your first time building a uh, human anatomically correct figure, or attempting to at least, or even building a uh, stylized head if you're sculpting or, or whatever you're doing, you can come in here, start with your head, just place a sphere, and then you have, let me go ahead and restore my custom user interface here, and then you have that underlying skull, you have the underlying muscle, the fat, everything you need to where you can just now shape this. You got that skull underneath. You can start making these kinds of changes now, now that you have this. Let's say like that. So now we're starting to get the basic shape of the head. And we'll say, okay, we'll come in here. We want to get these eye sockets. We'll just use the standard brush. Get, get a little nose here going. We'll turn on the muscle. Okay, we can see that. Uh-huh. Pull that in. Now you can see where these processes now come from. Where you're able to get in here yourself and work on these things. I'm just going to play with this for a little bit just to get those basic proportions. If you look here, here's one that I already did. And we have the, the basic shapes of the head as well as the neck. But if you look here, we don't have any eyes completed. We don't have the nose finished. We don't have any mouth. We don't even have any ears. Let's go on over here, and let's go back to our skeleton, and all I'm going to do is just uh, isolate that head. I'm going to do the same thing here. So now we got the head, and now I can turn my transparency back on. Now I can mess with all this, and line up the nose a bit, the brow general shape of the head. Look at the skull. Get in the zygomatic process there. Mess more with the jaw here. As we go, maybe I'll dynamesh and make it a little bit easier to work with. I'm just gonna work with my mesh. I'm not really using any special brushes or anything. I'm literally just using the move brush for the most part, and then also using the trim and uh, the trim dynamic brush, which is the flatten kind of planar style brush, as well as some clay tubes to build up some forms. So let's go ahead and pull down here with our clay tubes brush, smooth it out. Nose here. Let's uh, soften that and then just move this in. Pretty simple stuff. And you can see how working this way you can kind of make it a lot easier on yourself instead of always referencing something that's 2D, an image up above you, or I'm sorry, just on another monitor or maybe in a book that you're referencing. I have a couple monitors here as well as my Cintiq. So I can throw images up on there and take a look at those. And I definitely recommend that you do that. Absolutely reference real life photos of actual people. It's gonna help you out a lot more in the long run. Having a 3D reference in ZBrush is gonna help you out a ton as well. So go ahead and give it a try, get in here. Mess with this stuff a bit. Mess with this Ryan Kingsline model. So few people talk about it, you know? They come into the light box and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I often start with this, this basic head, this demo head over here. And people talk about some of the other tools in here, the, the average human or Nick's human mesh. This model is the most valuable asset that comes built into ZBrush that you will find if you want to study anatomy. 
This is an awesome, awesome reference and tool. And so many people don't talk about it, which is which is sad. But uh, I thought I would call it out here, you know, while I'm working, so that you guys could see it. And you can see how we're kind of getting closer here to that reference that we're using underneath. Now sometimes it's even helpful if you take the skull or a part of the uh, Ryan Kingsline mesh and you, you dynamesh parts together. But you're gonna end up getting a lot of gaps and you're not really gonna get the true shape of the face. That's where your, your 2D image references are gonna have to come in handy. So once you're coming back to this, you can see, look at here, we have flesh here, we have some fat that's not kind of uh, visually available in this model. We just have some muscles flowing and uh, inserting and connecting to the bones that they connect to. So go ahead, play with it for a while. Try and keep it as close as you can as you're working with it, with your mesh. Go ahead and turn on the transparency. Look at it from every possible angle. Use your move brush, try and get it close to these different angles here. Try and focus on these different bony landmarks that you're seeing here and here. Focus on these shapes and you're gonna have a lot easier time while you're working on that mesh. All right, well, I hope that helps you in your study as you're working on this kind of stuff. So I thought I would give a little bit of a different perspective, you know, give you my personal uh, strategy for studying anatomy. Great tool, check it out. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks.